Oh, now I will say that. that's pretty freaking cool, man. Bro, that is cool looking. <laughs> All right, here we go. Wait, we don't actually need this. You can usually just pop these backwards. Oh, look at that. Do it's the better backwards. to do with a sharp knife in your hand, too. Yeah, and always cut towards yourself or your buddy. So this is not sponsored. I purchased this because I'm curious. This, to me, and Brett, you tell me if I'm right or wrong, there's the dealer installed type robots and then there's the DIY robots. I would say this is one of the top of the line DIY. Yeah, robots. as far as as far as install it yourself, no going through dealers at all. This right. is definitely being I mean it's being billed as well from the reviews the I've seen it seems to be on the on the cutting edge. Yeah. Literally. It looks looks pretty cool. Yes it does. Packaging is sweet. This is really nice actually. I'm not a tech reviewer but <laughs> I mean but look at it. Everything everything no, it fits good. good. I mean look at this. That's Cutest little card I've ever seen. Oh boy. Oh boy. What? Bro. Hold on there. Oh. All right, so now it's definitely like, uh, who are the little guys that go across the desert picking up the broken robots in Star Wars? Uh, but this is it. Look at that guy. He didn't even weed whack around. <laughs> so you've been mowing manually, right? I have, and yeah, it's been but terrible. he didn't even weed whack around this. So he literally brought a manual mower up here and went around and just left it sitting here. Poor little fella. Oh wow, the blades are all rusty. I'm gonna get made fun of because I don't know what the sand people are called. Is that what they are? Sand I think people. It is the sand people. So there you go. No more ground wires. Now we're gonna weed whack this and clean it up. This is 100% without reading the instructions. We're not uh, gonna read the instructions unless we have to. I am looking at this from like the perspective of how would I install this if I'm just walking in off the street? Plug but, and play, I want plug and play. Yeah. Cause that's how most people no, do No, I things. mean, I think most people are definitely. When I put together stuff from Ikea, I try not to read the instructions. Right. You know? I'm gonna, I'll be right back. Good luck with that. Al, can you uh, can you grab me the top for this? What is it? Out. What is it? What do you need? What is it? I need the top for the beacon. The beacon. This looks like Thor's hammer. Is that a beacon? I think so. Dude, that really does. By the power of Gray Skull. No, that's He-Man. Hey, you're doing a great job, by the way. Why do you think I'm here? It's for this is your house. You, you got to do all the work. It. I'm just gonna get the views. So so far, you haven't looked at any directions. No instructions. So there's so a lot of things labeled here. Like this is a buy. See there, that's a buy. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I think that says B1. No, because look. It's no, A1. it's an I. See, that's an no, I. Oh, no. Why would it go AI and then A2? All right. That doesn't make it. Go, go sit on an umbrella. I don't know what the optimal place to put the beacon, but if you look, that's all That's all the room we get. What's that, 15 feet? No, that's a good, uh, that's 20, 20 feet. That means there is a cord I have to bury then, possibly. Is this a wire I'm gonna have to bury? I mean, it depends on how you do it, right? Well. If you put the beacon up here, you're not burying anything. Oh, you can put it up there? I think you have to put it wherever is optimal, right? I thought it was just it. meant to go in the ground. That's why you got these spikes. So I, I think it might be. I don't know. I haven't read the instructions. I mean, put it, yeah, just put it so where like it's got a chance. So like the corner of the house? Yeah. You probably have to install this on like step nine though, and we're doing it as step That's one. all right, we're advanced. Watch those spikes. Man, I, I can see the comments now. You guys didn't read the directions, you dummies, blah, blah, blah. You're not giving a true. Now this is a true review This though. is on How Brett. Many... If you guys don't like it, it's because Brett sucks. I yeah. wanted to do this by the book. This is as by the book as it's gonna get. You're good at screwing, buddy. I have three kids. Oh, <laughs> Oh, now I will say that. that's pretty freaking cool, man. Bro, that is cool looking. <laughs> All right, so there it says EcoFlow app. I bet you that's where you're gonna get your install. Oh my gosh, this is install instructions. This thing is heavy. Like it's. Oh, oh boy. Oh, look at that. It's like a mountain bike. It's it looks like a toy, but it's it's thick. I, so first impressions. This is this is all metal, right? Yeah, this is some certain some type sort of, of aluminum, some or... sort of alloy plastico. I'm gonna download the app, nice and easy. Hmm. Well, I like installing robot mowers. This is great. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <sighs> so charge the mower. All right, mower is charging. Fix the antenna. You're doing a great job, Brett. Appreciate right. you. Thanks, Al. I gotta make sure it has uh, the latest firmware. Oh. 
All right, so I'm connecting to the Wi-Fi on the mower. Brett, this is non-alcoholic beer. It's so good. The thing about it is, it's still all the same calories, so I'm still fat. So I downloaded the firmware to my phone and now it's sending it to the mower. It got to 50% and it stopped. I mean, it's not that, it doesn't take that long. It's I'm pretty comfortable. Now. We now have a light flashing. That looks like Maximilian. Don't like three people in the audience will know what don't that press is. Don't press any buttons. Though. Oh yeah, there's all kind of cool lights on there. Look uh, at that, dude. No touchy touchy. What if thing is, this thing is like all show and no go? Because I was in college. It, all right, so it says, Move the antenna in an open area to find the position with a strong signal, then fix the antenna. All right, so it's still saying weak signal. Go right on top of the mower. So I say, let's put it over here where we were originally thinking and let's see if it'll run. Why don't you try putting the mower out on the corner? The mower's gonna exit the charging station. Oh, well. Look at that, popped right off of there. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Good stuff. Whoa, what happened? Oh, whoa. yeah, whoa, whoa. Whoa there. It says, steer the mower along the edge of your lawn. Okay, so we're just doing a perimeter of the house, not yep. lawn. Okay, I'm gonna, I need an, whoa, 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 whoa. I need another beer. How's it gonna know to get across the driveway? I'm gonna drive it across the driveway. Okay, all right. We're gonna find out. So far, the driving experience, how is it? It's pretty easy. I mean, it's, it's, it's really touchy. Here's another corpse laying around. So this one doesn't work anymore either? No, this one's got a broken wire somewhere too. Well, you got a nice little tucked up area for it. Right, so if need be, it can come up here. Oh, oh, oh. she's touchy over yeah. here. What I'm gonna have this do is I'm gonna have it go down, around, back here, and then come right back on top of it. So. Can you see that on the screen to tell it to do that? I am not sure yet. That's what you're working on, okay. By the way, when I go barefoot next to it, that's how you know this is not sponsored. Don't worry, kids, the blades aren't running right now. It's, it's only in training mode. So now you're thinking that's gonna tell it Hey, this is the only place where you can go from there to there. It just knows. Yep. It should. Okay, yeah, theory. it's logical. A few moments later. Brett, you're doing a great job. Saving map. All right, okay. so now it's mapped successfully. Okay. So let's just complete mapping. Yeah, just see what happens. All right, so now it says start mowing. It goes as low as 0.8 inches and as high as three. What have you been mowing? Oh, only as high as three? Well, that... So how would you put this on St. Augustine grass? I don't think it. I don't think it's the St. Augustine. Well, one. we'll have to challenge it for that later. Is it already charged? Is it mowing now? Oh, it is. Can you pause it? It's, it's literally coming right at my cooler. <laughs> it really is coming right for your stuff. I know, huh? You can hear it going. Now it's mowing. Backyard flowing. Oh, look at it going through the thick stuff. That was pretty good. Actually, yeah, look at the, hey, wait, here, get the cut quality right there, brosie. Yeah, here's the cut quality right here. Right there, it's actually, I mean, it's pretty good, actually. All right, y'all, so the install so far, I mean, dead easy, right? Like, this was, I've installed two wired units here and one at my dad's house. So this is my fourth auto mower install. Plus what you've seen mower. of your friends in the neighborhood right. and talked to them. And this was by far the easiest one that I've done. There was no digging in the ground. I mean, we're up and running. It's We started at, what, like 3.45 and it's 4.55 yeah, now? So, so like an hour. an hour. So we played around a little bit. So and you didn't even do anything. What are you talking about? I did all of it. When oh, this video oh, yeah, edited. Yeah, sorry. Nick, My when bad. you edit this, I did all of it, okay? So, no, what we'll do though, guys, is we're gonna let Brett have this at the house. You saw we had some complicated setups, so we're gonna let it go for a week. We'll come back, and then we'll see what adjustments he had to do and what his thoughts are there. But so far, we're both impressed, and the cut quality looks really good. Yeah, I mean, it, it literally, you can see stripes. Here, come over here, you can see the stripes. Nice. It's cutting off a decent amount of grass. Mm -hmm. So It I, moves fast. I'm happy. I'm happy with it so far. Okay, let's wait. Let's let's fast forward to a week now. All right, y'all, so here we are. We're exactly one week later after the first, or after the initial install, yep. and uh, we're gonna get Brett's thoughts, some things he's learned, what he likes, all of that kind of stuff. Let me just say, though, we're not gonna go into great detail here. We actually recorded a podcast where we talked about in depth all of the things like, dislike, pros, cons, all of that stuff that Brett has experienced here. So you can click the link in the description below to get more detail there. This is gonna be a general overview. So overall, tell me what your thoughts are after one week. So overall, I mean, you can look and see, it's it's done a pretty good job mowing. I mean, I can see the stripe. Uh, I don't call them stripes, but they're lines. Well, let's, hold on, let's, oh, let's set her free. Oh, okay. Let's send her out. 
Okay, so you just told it to mow that area, so that's one of the things yep. you like is... Yeah, so it's gonna mow just this front area right now. So I like that because I'm gonna, I'm gonna be out in my front yard with my kids in a little while, but the mower's supposed to mow, so I can go ahead and send it specifically to that area knowing that in an hour I'm gonna be out there and I don't want it out there while I'm sitting out there enjoying it. I just want it to be doing its job. So now you can see it's uh, doing everything in the, uh, in the front. Okay, so it's doing its, it's, it's mowing in lines. Is that what it's doing? Yeah, so it, uh, it decides, it knows the area, uh -huh. and then it decides the most efficient way to cut the area. Does it always cut it the same way? So that's, that's my, one of my big complaints right now, and I'm sure down the road when they send out another firmware update at some point, I'm sure they will update the firmware to make it change patterns, but right now, it's only mowed this way on my lawn. Okay. So, a concern of mine would be if it's doing that every single day, yeah. down and back, down and back, down and back, it's not a heavy mower, but eventually it will wear a pattern in the grass. Yeah, so that tells me that whoever invented it doesn't really understand grass. And I find that with most of these companies, they're tech people, they're not grass people, but that's okay. All right, so it mows in lines and it mows the exact same lines every day. That's, yep. that's fine. It looks good though. So it does. what would you say about cut quality? So cut quality, Having owned several different uh, robot mowers, I will say that the the electric motor that's powering the cutting deck seems to be a little bit more oomph to it. It doesn't bog down in thick grass the way other ones that I've used have. I'd say as far as cut quality, I mean, you can see it cuts great. Uh, the grass is cleanly cut. It's not shredded yeah. or anything. Cut quality, I'm, I'm really happy with. Okay, good. What about those front wheels? Those are something people talk about. Are you finding a use for those? I mean, they look different. My opinion on the front wheels is they're a gimmick. Okay. I understand the concept behind it, right? Which the is concept, what? The concept behind these wheels is they're omnidirectional, which is supposed to allow it to swing easier when it turns. I mean, it looks like it's swinging pretty it, aggressively. And it, and it, it works great in certain situations. Okay. So flat ground like this, they turn great. But if you come over here, if it gets off of the grass at all, so you see there's what, what would you say? Inch, inch and a half lip? Yeah. If it gets onto here, when it turns, when it swings sideways, it has a hard time getting up back onto this grass. Well, let's see if it does it right here. Okay, it's, so if we had St. Augustine grass with like a four inch, well, I, I would, can't cut that tall anyway, but. I would worry that it would get hung up. Okay. That would be my concern. All right, so that's the wheels. What else uh, can we talk about here? What are some of the things you do like about it? Uh, the app is incredibly intuitive. Okay. So I feel like, like you said, these are tech people that have developed this and you can tell that this is not their first foray into app development. User experience so is that excellent. So the okay. app development is not janky. So it works, it connects easily. Functionality is pretty good. So yeah, it's high centered itself right now, which is new. Oh, that's the first time. It's trying though. It's trying. Yeah, so look, the omnidirectional wheels are being a hindrance right now, right? It can't yeah. turn. So now it's digging a hole. And so it's making it worse. Well, now it's definitely hung itself up because now the deck's gone. Yeah, there's no way it's going to get out of this. No. Is that the first time that's, that's happened? That's the first time that's happened. If this becomes a problem, it's really easy for me to just delete this one area and remap it. What if you just wanted to bump this little section in there, some on the So app? there, unfortunately, there's not a way for it to do that. So if yet. you do your initial outline incorrectly, you, you gotta delete that. You gotta delete it and do the whole outline again. Yep. Okay, all right. One of the cons with this, so this, this mower has both an RTK antenna right here. Yep. And it has the vision-based mapping, right? LiDAR? It's, the LiDAR radar or whatever, so it's vision-based. It sees this and it says, oh no, there's an obstacle in the way. And so now you can see there's a patch of grass here where it's not mowing. Oh, because it, it won't go through the Because it thinks bush. that that's a, something's in the way there, so it won't mow that. Okay, gotta learn the difference in leaves in a bush and say uh, bricks. Now that's a firmware thing, right? They can update the firmware to teach it. That's AI, it's as gonna AI learn. AI advances. Yeah, okay. That's something that I think it can overcome. The wheels are something that I don't think you can overcome. Uh, I was gonna ask you too, remember how we were talking about when we did the initial mapping, you're like, oh, I'm gonna take one stripe across the driveway and just tell it, 
What did you find out with that? Was that correct or, or how did you get the different areas mapped out where it's gonna traverse the driveway and such? So I, I mapped it the way that I would have mapped it if I was installing a robot mower that had ground wires. And so I had it one big continuous thing. Yeah. I found that in the app, it actually would rather you map it in zones. So I remapped it. I moved the charging station up front. I moved the pole up front. So you just did that not because of a problem. You see that because that's so what there, you So there was a problem. The problem with where we had it was I had it on the side of the, the house and it was exposed to the midday sun all day. When it went to go charge during the middle of the day, the mower was so hot that it was barely charging. I would say, get the mower cover because it's not gonna charge during the day and then and then it's gonna be kind of useless. I moved the, the charging station up here, I moved the pole up here and I had good enough reception to install it there. So I remapped everything and it shows me, hey, map it by zone. So I, I chose this as a zone and then I made a bridge across my driveway which connected me to another zone. Then I made a tiny bridge from the side yard to the backyard which makes the backyard a zone and then I made another tiny bridge from the backyard to the beyond the fence part of the backyard. Yep. It kind of would freak out. So you make it logical by so, giving it zones. Right, so I gave it zones and now the mower says, if I have 50% charge, I know I can mow this zone and that zone. 20. You can do it either way. Oh, okay. You can set it up to say mow all. And so now the mower comes out and it chooses. If it gets halfway through a zone, it's like, hey, I need to charge my battery. It goes back, it charges, and then it remembers, hey, I was only halfway through this zone, let me go back out and, it and picks finish. Up? Okay. That's super nice. And about how long does it take it to recharge itself? Two to two and a half hours to recharge. Okay. From, it, it goes home when it's at about 20%. How's it doing on the thin parkway down here? It struggles on the thin parkway, and most of that I think is because of those omnidirectional wheels. Okay. So this is its own zone. I've had this set up as a zone and you can see the difference between how it's mowed here and how it's mowed Yeah, there. this is definitely not mowed too well. No. It struggles here because those omnidirectional wheels will slip off here or they'll slip off here and then it spends all of its time going back and forth trying to, trying to get straight and, and it really struggles. And here. I want to point out, this is low cut Bermuda, so this is not a tough, it's not tough to get up that. I mean, if this nope. was Kentucky bluegrass, tall fescue, God forbid, St. Augustine grass. Right, but wouldn't... the but the problem is, it's a it's you have a hard lip of about an inch or so. I know that's what I'm trying to say. If it can't traverse that, it's not going to traverse any other grass. So that's what I would worry is that it would not be able to transition from a driveway or a sidewalk mm. back into St. Augustine or high cut Something anything. Else. Is this as good or better than some of the other? models you've used or not? So the you've cut, used mostly Husqvarna. I have, I've used two different Husqvarna models. Okay. And I'll say that the cut quality on this is superior to the Husqvarna models. Okay. The Husqvarna models did not struggle in certain areas that this struggles. They were ground wire though? They were all ground wire. Okay. So, so the Husqvarna models absolutely have a downside and the downside is the ground wire. The ground wire was a giant pain. But you can see, so here's this pole, right? Yep. And you can see there's what, at least a foot and a half? Yeah, like a football shape around. Where it can't mow here because when it comes straight onto this, the, the LiDAR sees this pole and it says, there's an obstacle there, let me go around it. But I would like for it to be smart enough to get closer. They could teach this logic to make it a little bit better, but right now, it struggles. But again, I want to go back to you like the app, the, the usability of the app, so to make changes, additions, because a lot of people, they want to dial this in more and more and more. The app is super user right. friendly for that. So so the app, I feel, is great. Okay. It, it's ready. It's It's been developed well. Round two, when they come out with EcoFlow Blade number two. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's three grand right now, so something to consider. The biggest thing, and I think this is absolutely an oversight on their part, and, and this is not something that's going to be easy to fix via firmware update is right here is where your your contacts for your charging station is oh on the bottom when it mows it's flinging grass out of here it sticks to this so then when when little eco flow goes home it goes and it it attaches itself to similar charging pads but it says there's not enough grass surface the area there's something there it's dirty and so it won't charge 
I go on vacation for a week and it's sitting on the charging station, not charging. So that's a design flaw. They'll yeah. definitely fix that in the next iteration. Overall, I mean, you can see, look at the grass. The grass looks great. When it mm -hmm. mows, it mows great. I feel like if they fix a couple of these little tiny flaws, this can be a fantastic machine. All right. I think that's a good overview for now. Like I said, we're going to do a podcast uh, where we'll go into a lot more depth and, and really talk about this. So this has been pretty in depth. So uh, click the link in the description below. Leave us your comments. Let us know what you think. We'll create a discussion here because that's what this is about. We're all learning about the technology. I'm interested to hear if you're watching this video and you own one of these, yeah. what's your experience? Have you had a similar experience to what we're seeing here or is this a one-off thing? Am I the only one experiencing the problems that I'm seeing? And I want to reiterate, I, this is all Brett's experience. We're not trying to be negative. Like I said, I bought that. So we're just trying to say, hey, this is the beginning of this technology. There's going to be issues. Let's go over what they are so you can decide, do I want to be an early adopter? And if I do, okay, I'm just ready to, to work on some of these things. Like you are, you're obviously, these are things that aren't hindering you from using the unit. No, I'm you're using it and I really it. like the unit overall. Yeah. I mean, I think it looks cool. I love the cut quality. I've gotten more comments about how cool this thing looks. The other thing, it moves fast. It seems nimble. Some of the other robots I see are very slow. And this it doesn't, thing seems to really get moves, up and go. Yeah, right. It moves with the purpose, right? Yeah. It, it is mowing down and back the same way that you would mow if you were mowing the grass. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bumbling around the lawn. I'm just not there to say, go spend your hard-earned $3,000 to get yeah. it. Maybe wait for iteration two, which is how a lot of technology works. All right, good stuff. We'll see you in the comments below and we'll see you in the robot mode. Lab.